Thank you for joining us today. I'm Joseph Owen, and today we will be discussing umbilical venous catheter placement in pediatric patients. At the end of this session, you should recognize the ideal location and the suboptimal locations for placement of an umbilical venous catheter, and then be able to describe the common complications that arise when the catheter is misplaced. Let's start with a discussion of why we would place and use an umbilical venous catheter, often abbreviated UVC. In neonatal babies, particularly premature neonatal babies, it can be very challenging to get a peripheral IV due to the size of their vessels. In the neonatal period, the umbilical vein remains patent and we can access that through the umbilicus and put a larger bore catheter into a more central vein. And that allows for the administration of some degree of nutrition, some electrolytes. It can also help with administration of medications and can be used for transfusions. It may not be quite as optimal as what we refer to as a peripherally inserted central venous catheter, but it is a nice reliable form of access that can be obtained in that immediate neonatal period. So let's look at an umbilical venous catheter. First, I will point out to you that this is a gastric catheter that we have coming down and terminating in the stomach. It has a single barium strip. That's what allows it to be seen. Okay, And then we have a second catheter here. Notice this catheter has two strips of barium in it. So it looks like almost a railroad track. It is actually being inserted somewhere around the umbilicus. And then it is running up the umbilical vein to the level of the liver. Now, this catheter is a little low. And we'll talk about why it is low. So when you see that umbilical venous catheter, it doesn't just have to pass through the umbilical vein. It actually needs to pass through the portal venous system, the ductus venosus, all the way to the caboatrial junction of the IVC and the right atrium. So that is our ideal terminus where we have the yellow star. And we can see again that the IVC is running just to the right of midline along the spine up toward the heart. The, our catheter again is within what is this purple structure or the patent umbilical vein. And that umbilical vein will actually join up with the left portal venous system at a part of the portal venous system that's referred to as the umbilical segment of the left portal vein. From there, the catheter needs to travel through the residual embryologic structure, which is the ductus venosus, which later on becomes the ligamentum venosum in adults. So ideally, that catheter, again, is going to course all the way <clears throat> through the umbilical vein, left portal venous system, ductus venosus, to the IVC at the inferior cavoatrial junction. And when it's located in that spot, you are gonna have the best flow and you're gonna have the least potential for complications of medication or TPN or electrolytes impacting the liver and portal venous flow. All right, so let's look at a case. Here we have, uh, again, a 32 week, one day old premature infant. And we can see this catheter here, okay? It's overlying kind of the abdomen and it is running from somewhere near the umbilicus directly up right to that inferior caboatrial junction. And roughly uh, your inferior caboatrial junction can be judged by the location of your diaphragm. So those are the diaphragms there. So this is maybe slightly above that caboatrial junction, but it's actually in a pretty reasonable position to be used. This is another catheter, again, in a 34 week premature infant. Again, I'll point out that we have this gastric catheter that's coming down here, okay? And then we've got this railroaded or two barium strip catheter, um, kind of twisted over the abdomen, but it's likely entering the umbilicus somewhere here, and then it's coursing up and terminating pretty deep within the right atrium or even possibly uh, with, into the left atrium through the foramen ovale. So this is too far, um, and this catheter would need to be retracted. And you can see that it was retracted, and now it's terminating here, which is very close to where we would expect the diaphragm to be. Again, it's being inserted at the umbilicus right around here, coursing up through the umbilical vein, left portal vein, ductus venosus to the IVC. So perfect placement there. In this case, we have a 28 week, one day old baby, day of life zero. And we can see that they have been intubated and they have a gastric catheter in place. They also have an umbilical arterial catheter. But what we're focused on is this umbilical venous catheter. So we can see the two barium strips of the umbilical venous catheter. It's inserting somewhere right around there. Get rid of these other lines. And then it courses up toward the liver into the portal venous system, but then it takes a turn into that right portal vein. By turning into that right portal vein, <clears throat> it is now terminating in an area where there's relatively slow flow and where the vessel lumen is relatively small in caliber. And that puts this patient at risk for multiple different complications. One, the catheter can directly injure the wall of the portal vein or can even puncture through the wall of the portal vein and terminate in the liver. Second, medication administration or electrolyte administration or TPN administration can all cause damage to 
the region of the liver where the catheter terminates. So you can get hepatic infarction, hematoma, TPNoma, thrombosis, um, and even abscess in, in some rare instances. So this is a suboptimal location. And you'll notice that when placing both umbilical venous catheters and umbilical artery catheters in neonatal children, they'll spend a lot of time manipulating those catheters to get them in the correct location. So here we see the same patient. We have those other catheters in place. This is the tip of that umbilical artery catheter, the tip of our gastric catheter. And now we can see our umbilical venous catheter entering here and coming up and terminating sort of over the liver. So it's not quite at that inferior margin, but it's certainly not at our expected location of the cavoatrial junction. In many neonates, uh, despite multiple attempts at repositioning the catheter, sometimes the umbilical venous catheter will be suboptimally positioned. And in that case, you will often use that catheter when needed, um, and you, but use it conservatively and also look to getting a peripherally inserted central venous catheter terminating in a central vein that provides you uh, with better central venous access. So these catheters can be used, um, but again, use sparingly and conservatively because we don't know if that is really into the, liga the ductus venosus and therefore whatever we put in there flows directly into the heart as opposed to flowing off into the portal venous system. All right, so what are complications that we see? Well, we see catheters that are too deep and they have been known to perforate the right atrium. They've also been known to pass through the foramen ovale and terminate in the left atrium, which then results in potential administration of stuff into the, to the left heart, which can be dangerous. If they <clears throat> terminate in the left or right portal vein, you can certainly get direct vascular injury that can lead to a hepatic hematoma. You can get infarction of the liver due to thrombosis or irritation of the portal vein or administration of something that causes thrombosis. And, it, and, and the classic one is actually a TPNoma or a collection of TPN that has filled a hepatic infarction. Catheters that are too short, administration of, of fluids, electrolytes, things of that nature can cause thrombophlebitis and thrombosis of the umbilical vein. And they can also, again, diffuse out and, and enter the portal venous flow and cause various hepatic complications. All right, let's look at a case real quick. We have a 27-week-old boy with respiratory distress. We can see that umbilical venous catheter entering here, coursing into the liver, and then taking just the slightest turn off to the right. If you look very closely, there's also small flecks of gas here in the right hemi liver, and that's consistent with portal venous gas from this catheter insertion. So this is a suboptimal location, but it's very subtle in terms of its turn. Now this catheter, this boy was very sick. We can see that he has near complete opacification of his lungs due to respiratory distress syndrome or surfactant deficiency. And so this catheter, it was elected to be used um, and, and with only some minor repositioning. So again, we can see the catheter is now a little bit uh, better in terms of it's not directed toward that right portal vein, but we can still see some areas of portal venous gas over the right hemi liver. And at about day of life five or six, this baby uh, developed sort of what was felt to be sepsis. As part of that workup, they received a comprehensive metabolic panel that showed elevation of the liver, enzymes, and an ultrasound was obtained. This ultrasound showed a complex fluid collection with septations, as well as a more solid component off to the side here, Okay, also seen here. All right, and, and initially uh, the reaction of the primary team was that this could be some form of malignancy or abscess. But given this was in the right hemi liver and we were able to go back and see that initial malpositioned umbilical venous catheter and the portal venous gas, we recognized that that catheter was likely the cause of this abnormality in the liver. So that catheter had been malpositioned. It had also been used for TPN administration. And so this was felt to be an infarction with accumulation of TPN or a TPNoma. Again, that slight malposition of the catheter with the portal venous gas, as opposed to the catheter when retracted, still not in a great position and, and places the, the liver at risk for injury. Luckily, we recognize this was likely a catheter related complication. And so this baby did not undergo a biopsy of this abnormality, which would be high risk in such a, a sick intubated 27 week old baby. Um, it all, we also decided not to drain this because we, again, felt it was related to TPN administration. You can see at one month follow-up, the mass in the liver is much smaller, almost completely resolved. And at three month follow-up, the liver is completely normal. So this resolved on its own um, and, and did not require any intervention. All right, so in summary, umbilical venous catheters should be positioned at that inferior caboatrial junction. That's the only way that we know that it's not directed into a portal vein and that it's far enough that anything you administer will go directly into the central venous system. Deep catheters risk cardiac injury and short catheters risk hepatic injury due to installation of medications, electrolytes, or nutrition into the portal venous system. 
This is a really nice reference in AJR related to neonates and UVC catheters. I recommend you look at it. And I want to thank you for your time today. I hope you found this helpful. And I hope you join us on the rest of our series for assessment and placement of catheters in neonates. Thank you for your time.